Hello Omnibus Collectors, it's Riley from Population Goes Comics Department, and I'm here with another Omnibus of the Week. But before I get started, I want to dedicate this Omnibus of the Week video and all of October's Omnibus of the Week videos to my best friend, Kevin Fung, who passed, sadly, this past Saturday in a tragic accident. It's been extremely hard for me these past few days to go on with knowing that I'm never going to see my best friend uh, who stood next to me at my wedding as my best man ever again. Uh, but I loved him very much and I'm going to dedicate everything that I do with my life to his memory and these videos specifically. Kevin loved comics just like I did and Together we shared back and forth a lot of books uh, in series that we knew that each other would love. And uh, specifically, he he loved horror series. He loved zombies, vampires, all kinds of monsters. We grew up together uh, watching Godzilla movies. And uh, he was the first person to recommend me some specific series. And uh, one of those... Uh, <clears throat> well, the, the reason I mention this is because throughout October, I was already planning on doing uh, each Omnibus of the Week about a horror or horror-related comic. Um, and it just so happens that most of those were recommended to me by Kevin. So the first one uh, that I'm going to be talking about was one that he recommended me that he really loved and he thought was fantastic and, and he told me that I needed to read it um, and that was the uh, Marvel Zombies series. So the Marvel Zombies series was collected in the Marvel Zomnibus. Here's my uh, copy of the Marvel Zomnibus. If you watched my recent uh, video where I talked about what I did when I went to Austin Comic Con, uh, I mentioned that I got this signed by the cover artist Arthur Sudam. So this book collects the majority of the Marvel Zombies series. It collects Marvel Zombies 1 through 5 as well as Marvel Zombies Return and Marvel Zombies uh, Supreme and then some material from Fantastic F or Ultimate Fantastic 4, Black Panther and a few one-shots. So it's a pretty thick volume. There's a lot of material within here. And just take a look. The cover is a uh, Arthur Sudam homage to uh, the Secret Wars number one cover. Our spine. It actually was called the Zomnibus. There's a cover roll on the back showing off all that work. Most of those covers are by Arthur Sudam. I'll go ahead and take off the dust jacket. On the inside, we have the uh, description of the book and all the stories within. And on the other side, we get the creator biographies. The book itself is one of the classic type of hardcovers. It has the embossing on the cover, but instead of uh, usually they're either red or blue, this one is green, green on the side, plain on the back, and there's also green on the inside of the book, and the spine is green as well. Nice uh, stitching and gluing on the spine together, keeps it together uh, while making it also easy to read. Very nice binding. Uh, I had no problem reading through this whole volume. There was virtually no damage to the spine, no creasing or anything because it's a very nicely put together book. Uh, now for the content of the book, um, as I said, there's a lot of different series in here, and a lot of it is from different creators. We have stuff from uh, Mark Miller, Robert Kirkman, and Fred Van Lente, uh, as well as a few others, and there's plenty of artists inside. Uh, the book starts with a couple of uh, one-shots. One of them is a is called uh, Dead Days. It's a prelude of sorts to the, uh, the first Marvel Zombies story. Uh, and it's written by Robert Kirkman, who you'll know from The Walking Dead, with art by Sean Phillips. Uh, this issue itself was actually published after Marvel Zombies number one, but it was released later as a uh, prequel one-shot. 
so it starts with that. It starts off really well. I remember when I was reading that, it immediately engrossed me within there. But the problem is that exactly after the Dead Days one-shot ends, we see it lead into the Marvel Apes one-shot. Um, actually like two Marvel Apes stories, uh, Prime 8 and then Evil Evolution. And it kind of ties into the Marvel Zombie stuff, but it just, it was so slow and just didn't have enough to do with the main Marvel Zombie story that I just did not see myself really caring and I considered just skipping through it because it really brought the narrative to a halt before it went back into the main story. Because after the Marvel Apes storylines, it goes to the uh, Ultimate Fantastic Four issues, which is where originally, here we go, we saw the Marvel Zombies appear. It was in a dimension hopping storyline in Ultimate Fantastic Four. The Fantastic Four goes to an alternate dimension where they meet other versions of themselves in a world that's been taken over by zombies. Um, and that's written by Mark Miller, and it has art by uh, Greg Land. I'm not a huge fan of Land, but I will admit that his work here is done pretty well. He does a really good job of uh, displaying the goriness of the zombies, and his uh, while it's his character work that is not so great, his backgrounds um, really do stand out. He does a really good job of painting the backgrounds, especially in the uh, horrific version of the Marvel Universe where the cities are destroyed and all we get is a bunch of death and destruction. Uh, so, following these issues of Ultimate Fantastic Four, we go into Marvel Zombies 1, and then a few more issues of Ultimate Fantastic Four, and then some issues of Black Panther, and then Marvel Zombies 2. All that kind of works together uh, as one solid story. The uh, uh, Dead Days one-shot, all the issues of Ultimate Fantastic Four, the issues of Black Panther, and the first two Marvel Zombies miniseries all work together as one solid story um, by Kirkman and by Millar. And uh, it's a really fantastic one. It's like whenever I first heard of the Marvel Zombie stuff, I thought it was going to be kind of gimmicky. And they kept making them and making them. And I was like, oh, there's so many of them. Like, it's just some sort of gimmick they're just trying to cash in on. Um, but it's actually a really, really interesting story that has some gravity to it. And the artwork um, in the Marvel Zombies miniseries are just fantastic from uh, Sean Phillips. Here's an, a good example of a two-page spread. You get some Silver Surfer in there. Um, he just knows how to display that horrificness of the Marvel Universe with all these characters turned into zombies. And it's, it's gruesome, and it's beautiful, and, and I absolutely love it. Um... So that goes on. Marvel Zombies 1 and 2 and all those other issues kind of conclude the first uh, arc, and then it turns towards another storyline where uh, after Kirkman and uh, after Kirkman and Millar uh, finish their story, uh, we had Marvel Zombies Return. Each issue was a one-shot focusing on various uh, zombies, uh, zombie characters. I think it was Spider-Man, Wolverine, Hulk, Iron Man, and I forget the last one um, offhand, but each of these characters gets their own one-shot, and you get to see some of, you know, either how they became zombies, or just a little bit of story about them as zombies, and it's uh, pretty interesting, but really the only one that was, in my opinion, a great one-shot out of that was the Spider-Man one, which is written by Fred Van Lente and has artwork by, um, sorry, I gotta track down because I kind of forget at points. It was uh, Nick Dragota, who is currently known for his work on East of West. So you see that starring Spider-Man. Awesome stuff. Um... The rest of the issues were pretty decent. Actually, yeah, we see the, the zombie version of Spider-Man visiting another universe here. And uh, so we see him go against Peter and all the rest of the crew from the Spider-Man series. And that's basically like you see... Uh, these different zombie characters interacting with various stuff. It was pretty interesting, but the Spider-Man one was really the only good one from that. After um, Marvel Zombies Return, 
was Marvel Zombies 3, which is where Van Lente took over as the main writer on the Marvel Zombies franchise. And uh, he started by introducing to us um, kind of a, a new focus to the series. It was uh, a new crew being put together to face the zombies. So he saw a lot of stuff from characters uh, that were more supernatural in... They were more supernatural characters. Uh, we got a lot of Machine Man in there. Um, there was a Man Thing. We had a lot of uh, stuff like... Uh, see right here. Aquarian, Jennifer Kale, characters like that um, who haven't really had a focus in the Marvel Universe. Um, and then this is also the series where we got Zombie Deadpool and that begat the Zombie Deadpool head which became a pretty popular part of the Deadpool comics for about a year or so when he was appearing in the uh, what was it? Deadpool core and the Merc with a Mouth series. Um, so these issues had art by Kev Walker. I really enjoy Kev Walker. There's some good stuff of him with Morbius and Machine Man. The uh, Kev Walker did a lot of work with the Thunderbolts, and he also did the Avengers Arena series, which was more recent. So those are really fantastic books. Really love those. And uh, if you dig him on there, you'll really dig his art here. Really fantastic Morbius right there. Um, and Van Lente's writing on the Marvel Zombies 3 and 4, those two miniseries, is pretty great. Um, it's a, as I said, it's a very different direction than the Kirkman and Sean Phillips stuff from the original two series, but it's very enjoyable. Um, definitely worth a read. And it has a lot of fan favorite characters that weren't being used, like a uh, man thing right there. So it was really nice to see them come back. Uh, now this was all Marvel Zombies three. If I'm Hold on, let me make sure I'm on the right track here. Yeah, and then, uh, so that was Marvel Zombies 3 and 4 kind of bleed into each other. Then Marvel Zombies 5 comes along, and it's still kind of the same crew. We still have Machine Man, and he's hooking up with different characters, and they're traveling around the uh, multiverse, basically, of the uh, Marvel Universe. It's a, a team of... They're called Armor. They're the Alternate Reality Monitoring and Operational Response Agency. Uh, so Armor, and they go to different dimensions and they take down threats from there. So in the uh, Marvel Zombies 5, every issue was kind of a one-shot that was lightly connected, featuring the members of Armor traveling to different dimensions and taking out the zombies. So you see in the first one there's a kind of a Wild West place where Quicksilver is a gunslinger and then it goes forth and there's different types of dimensions and there's one where it's like robots and uh, there's a medieval type dimension and then the final issue of Marvel Zombies 5 was supposed to take place in a world similar to our own where it was actually comic collectors who were reading the current series and there's some tongue-in-cheek stuff where they're talking about Marvel Zombies 5 is trash and he's like oh well why do you keep buying the series uh, because I'm waiting until it gets good again I have to keep you know I have to keep reading it because how do I know when they're gonna stop sucking um, so I thought that was uh, pretty pretty funny and uh, the character is excited about getting an issue of uh, Marvel team up with Machine Man and the, uh, Howard the Duck and then somehow he becomes a zombie and he's trying to deal with his life ending and, and uh, he's like you know I have to deal with all this and then my co collection and oh I'm a zombie maybe I can be a superhero something you know stuff like that and then at the end of it you get Machine Man and Howard the Duck showing up just to take him out. And it's pretty it's pretty humorous. Uh, Marvel Zombies 5 wasn't great, but that last issue just, you know, was was really nice little touch that I thought was really funny and added to it. And then after that, the book heads into, I believe this is the last portion of it, um, yeah, Marvel Zombies Supreme, which just wasn't very good, and I'm just not going to talk much about it, but it, it had members of like the Squadron Supreme 
or Supreme Power stuff, Hyperion and all those, uh, the zombie versions of them. It wasn't written uh, by Van Lente anymore at this point. This one was by Frank Marafino with uh, art by Fernando Blanco. So it doesn't have any connection to the other Marvel Zombies series that came before it. Uh, that said, reading through this book, you can probably stop uh, before this if you don't feel like reading through it because it's not entirely significant. You don't really need it, and it wasn't even that good of a story anyway. But I went ahead and read through it because I didn't want to leave part of it unread. And, uh, nah. and then there's a lot of back matter. There's uh, a bunch of different... This is actually really cool stuff. You see the covers that Arthur Sudam did, and then it shows which cover it's an homage to. So you see the uh, that one was an homage to the Uncanny X-Men issue for Days of Future Past, and then there's you know, the X-Men issue for the Phoenix, and then there's Captain America number one where he's punching Hitler, um, Uncanny X-Men 268 with Captain America, and Wolverine and Black Widow, and then all kinds of stuff. So there's there's different uh, homage covers throughout here, and you get a nice look at all that work by Arthur Sudam that he did, um, and which covers he's parodying. And you also get um, a bunch of zombie variants that, uh, or zombie covers for other series. Actually, that's what all these are. Is um, yeah, through here we get, like, Thor number one, there was a zombie variant, so maybe not uh, issues that were part of this series itself, but there were a bunch of zombie variants for other series. Uh, Wolverine number 58 zombie variant, Spider-Girl, uh, Amazing Spider-Man Girl 13 zombie variant, and then it goes into the um, Deadpool Merc with a Mouth series, where Arthur Sudam did all the covers, and each one of those was a parody of a different Deadpool, um, or not a different Deadpool, a different like movie or something like that. So we had stuff like, you know, Pretty Woman and Scarface parodies, uh, Alien, Train Spotting, a lot of different stuff like that. So there's a lot of cool back matter in this book. Um, and then a, so there's a bunch of different zombie variants for a bunch of different books. Um, and you get to see the regular covers as well. There's a ton of back matter in here, a ton of awesome stuff um, for any fan of the Marvel Zombies and any fan of Arthur Sudam. Um, and then a ton of, uh, there's some pencil work and inks so you can see how the art is. And then there's even some covers to the, uh, the old zombie comics from Marvel with the character Zombie. So a lot of stuff to love in this book, um, especially for fans of zombies, of Marvel, of Marvel zombies, of uh, if you're a fan of Robert Kirkman. There's a lot of stuff that I can say that I'd recommend this book. Um, you know, it's it's not perfect because there is a lot of stuff that's kind of lacking. There's I have a lot of problems with um, with the art from shoot uh, Greg Land. I mentioned before, he's not the best artist. His characters, uh, he definitely uses a lot of, uh, like, it looks like he traces, if you don't already know about Greg Land's artwork. Um, and the faces, it just it's not very attractive looking. So there's a lot of complaints on the artwork on there. The writing, for the most part, throughout the book is really great. I do have some shortcomings with uh, Marvel Zombies Return, Marvel Zombies 5 somewhat, and Marvel Zombies Supreme, definitely. Those two, uh, the, the Marvel Apes one-shots towards the beginning really slow it down. But overall, you know, if you're counting just that portion compared to everything else, there's fantastic artwork from, uh, from Sean Phillips. There's amazing work from Kev Walker. Uh, there's all kinds of different artists in here that are just great. And then the material from, from like, Robert Kirkman is just fantastic stuff. If you're a fan of The Walking Dead, then you will love... At, you'll at least love Kirkman's stuff in here because it's it's like reading The Walking Dead if instead of normal humans it was superheroes that were in this zombie apocalypse. Um, so fans of fun horror comics, if you want something that's fun to read, something easy, if you're a fan of watching those like uh, cheesy horror movies, um, then this is a really good one for you, but it's also genuinely frightening at some times. Uh, 
Marvel Zombies 1 and 2, there are some genuinely, like, skin-crawling times in there where it's just, it's, it's a really frightening comic. And I definitely recommend it. Um, I haven't looked recently as to how much this book costs online anymore. I don't know if it's gone out of print or anything. Um, but it is a nice volume. If you've ever been a fan of the Marvel Zombies, I recommend picking it up. It does kind of suck that there's one or, okay, there's one miniseries, Marvel Zombies Destroy, and one single issue, the Halloween special from a few years back, that are missing from this volume, so it's not exactly complete. But you get all the important stuff in there. Um, there's also a Marvel Zom Zombies vs. Ash, like a, an Army of Darkness crossover, but there might have been some licensing, licensing issues that causes them not to put that in that book. Um, so it's not completely complete, but you get all of the really good stuff, in my opinion. You get a ton of great back matter and bonus materials throughout that book, which make it pretty much worth picking up. Now, the cover price on this one was $125, um, so I was able to grab it for half off for uh, around $67. I, just as I said, I'm not sure how high the price is right now online, but I don't think that it sold out uh, since it released, what, last year or two years ago? I don't exactly remember. Anyway, um, if you're a fan of the Marvel Zombies series, let me know. Uh, you know, sound off in the comments. Tell me if you grabbed this book or if you prefer the single volumes. There's also complete collections, um, of which I believe volume three might have just come out. Uh, you know, talk to me about your other favorite horror comics, because I'll be doing more uh, videos throughout the month on different horror comics or horror-related, you know, monster-related comics um, in honor of October, and also in honor of my uh, my recently past friend, Kevin. Um, my next one is also one that specifically Kevin recommended me, so my next video is going to be another really special one. Um, so keep, you know, thanks for watching, keep uh, watching my new videos, keep leaving comments for me, um, I'll reply as best as I can whenever I can.